Hi, I'm Angel Velez. I'm a conductor based in Los Angeles as well as the co-founder and director of the Los Angeles Film Conducting Intensive. I'm delighted you can spend this time with us as we kick off the 2020 New Music Project. This project was created for two main reasons. One, to address the repertoire challenges facing performers and ensembles of this coming concert season. And two, to give voice to the many things of 2020. My sincerest thanks to all of the composers, there will be 60 of them, of LAFCI alumni who have so generously shared their talents to make this project possible. Beginning today, August 1st, all the way through July 1st of 2021, all the music you hear today in this concert, as well as much more, is available online at lefci.org entirely for free. Go ahead and browse it, and I hope that we can find something that can connect to you even in these times of social distancing. Whether it's a solo instrument like violin, trumpet, flute, or even carillon they heard earlier, all the way up into full ensembles. But we did cap it at 20 musicians so as to anticipate stage social distancing requirements. All that is available entirely online for free. My sincerest thanks to all the composers and to all the performers who have made this possible. I'm delighted we can celebrate the 2020 New Music Project with this free virtual concert. We'll go through the performances in concert score order. So we'll start off with the Woodwind family, go to the Brass family, percussion family, piano, harp, guitar, string family, and end with a few examples from the ensemble section of this project. I hope that this music can connect to you in some way. I hope that it can speak when sometimes it is difficult to find the words to share how we feel. And I thank you very much for joining us today. I'm delighted to start off this concert with a performance by the group Time for Three performing a piece by Patrick O'Malley. Enjoy the performances. Hi, my name is Patrick O'Malley. For the New Music Project 2020, I wrote a string trio called Coast, and the piece is inspired by how when the quarantines first went into effect, I would occasionally just get in my car and drive for hours up and down the Pacific Coast looking for a moment of calm and beauty in the Southern Californian landscape. The performance is by the ensemble Time for Three, which features Charles Yang and Nicholas Kendall on violins and Renan Meyer on double bass. Thank you.
It's my pleasure to introduce the Woodwind family with a composition by composer Jonathan Ehrman, performed by flutist Sarah Anden of the Hollywood Studio Symphony. I'm Jonathan Ehrman, and I am the composer of Take Flight Anyway for Solo Flute. Even when things seem bleak, we still have the capacity to find strength in ourselves and move forward. And what better way to express this musically than with the beauty and expressivity of a single flute in the hands of a radiant artist? I'm so pleased that Sarah Anden of the Hollywood Studio Symphony will be performing Take Flight Anyway. Hi everyone, my name is Pantavit King Siri, and my piece is called Meditation Number no. 1. The goal of this work is to share the feeling of calmness and peacefulness that I've experienced during meditation. The piece is built upon 10 pairs of focused breathing in and out, which is pretty much a basic meditation technique across many cultures. I would also like to invite all of you to breathe in and out along with a performer and in the hope that you can stay focused with yourself for at least three minutes today. Please enjoy meditation number one performed by Sarah Anden of Hollywood Studio Symphony.
My name is Leslie Labar, and my piece is entitled Idiopathic. With this composition, I tried to address the theme of 2020 with the perspective that every day brings new and different obstacles. But one must persist to kinetically move forward with a sense of hope, even with the unpredictability of the unknown. Please enjoy Idiopathic, performed by Ryan Roberts, oboist from the New York Philharmonic. Hi, I'm George Shaw. I am a composer, and 2020 has been a difficult year for many people. It was especially devastating to hear about the loss of Grant and Mahara. I wanted to write a piece of music that would celebrate and remember the kindness and generosity and the joy that Grant brought to many people through his work and through his creations of, of creating robots. So this is When Robots Play, composed for solo clarinet, and it is performed by Ricardo Morales of the Philadelphia Orchestra. Hello, my name is Sasha Blank and my piece is called Socially Distanced. The experience of the past events has left many creatives in an uncertain position. 
My piece is inspired by these challenges, both personally and professionally. I hope you enjoy Socially Distanced, performed by Catherine Kohler from the Nashville Symphony Orchestra. Hi, my name is Stephen Bennett, and I composed the piece entitled This Was Supposed to Be My Year. With the theme of 2020 in perspective, I decided to focus on an issue that affected me personally as well as many others. I wanted to express how in the beginning everything was going well and becoming familiar, but then the events of 2020 brought it all to a sharp halt. Every time I thought it would get better, it just got worse, until the birth of my daughter. So... I hope you enjoy my piece performed by Stephen Williamson of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Christine Hals. I'm a Norwegian film composer and vocalist. My stepdad got diagnosed with a deadly brain cancer last year called glioblastoma, which is the name of my piece. It's called glioblastoma and system calls from the shores of sticks. I'm really honored and grateful that the clarinetist Chris Richards from London Symphony Orchestra is going to play it and I really hope you enjoy. My name is Carl Johnson, and my piece is entitled, What Do I Tell You? Many times this year, I've wondered, how do I speak with my family and with my children about what I'm feeling about the events of this year? How do I share with them my thoughts and concerns without burdening them with my fears and anxieties? That's the idea behind this piece. Please enjoy, What Do I Tell You? as performed by Anthony McGill, Principal Clarinetist of the New York Philharmonic.
Hello, my name is Lars Clutterham. The English Baroque title of my composition for bassoon solo is Peace Cometh Anon, and my goal in writing it was to express the anxiety of the COVID pandemic, followed by a sense of calm and tranquility. The soloist is Mark Ortwein, Associate Principal Bassoonist for the Indianapolis Symphony. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Tom Howe and this humble offering is called Better With Time. Um, it's a piece to reflect the human spirit and an innate sense of humour in the face of adversity, of which 2020 has thrown quite a bit at us so far. Um, I'm lucky enough to have the piece performed by Suzanne Nelson of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. You know, I hope you enjoy it and stay safe.
Hi, my name is Gavin Templeton, and my piece is titled Collage. It's a reflection of the vast collage of images that I see daily while scrolling my newsfeed. Some are gut-wrenching, some inspire and bring hope, but mostly I've found that they leave me with a sense of sadness that I can't seem to shake. I'm pleased to introduce Jeff Coffin of the Dave Matthews Band, who will be performing this. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce the next section, The Brass Family, with a composition by Ryan Beard for a solo French horn, performed by Jeff Nelson of the Canadian Brass. Hello, my name is Ryan Beard. I'm a composer in San Diego, California. The late spring and early summer of 2020 brought systemic racism and police brutality to the forefront of our collective conscience. My personal feelings of anger, frustration, and hope for change in the future are encapsulated in my piece, Invention on Three Notes. Here to perform is the amazing Jeff Nelson 
of the Canadian brass. The three notes are B, La, and Mi. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Hi, my name is Anthony March. I'm from Spain and my piece is entitled Oración. Oración in English means prayer, so I wrote this piece as a prayer for the victims of COVID-19. And I'm so excited that it is being premiered 
by the legendary trumpeter and composer Arturo Sandoval. So I hope you enjoy it. Hello, this is Michael Choi from South Korea, and my piece is called Sanjo for Trombone, which translates as Scattered Melodies for Trombone. The year 2020 hasn't been easy for all of us because of the chain of unfortunate events like coronavirus as well as killing of George Floyd, leaving many people to be scattered mentally and physically. And I hope this music can bring people a little bit closer together under the theme of compassion. This piece will be performed by trombonist Alex Isles from Hollywood Studio Symphony, and I hope you enjoy the music. Thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Hi everyone, I'm Scott Reed and I wrote Uncertain Times for Solo Tuba. In writing the piece, I wanted to show off the dexterity of the tuba, which is something that we don't always get to hear. As a result, the piece is both very challenging and a lot of fun to play and to listen to. In a way, that's a metaphor for the challenging times in which we live. In the end, good things will come if we persevere. Here to perform Uncertain Times is the very talented Justice McKenzie, tuba player from the United States Air Force Band of the West, so please enjoy Uncertain Times. <laughs> So before we go into the percussion family next, I want to share with you a heartwarming story from a young lady named Caitlin, a high school incoming senior out of Pennsylvania, who decided to take a negative situation and find the positive. So Caitlin decided to create her very own instrument, one that's a little too large and owned by the school, and when the school shut down due to the pandemic, she no longer had access. So it didn't stop her at all. Caitlin decided to team up with her father, Ed, and build their very own marimba. As a percussionist myself, I can tell you that is an intimidating feat, something very difficult to tackle. Nonetheless, she did it, and here's her story. Hi, so I am delighted to be joined here with Ed and Caitlin Zakowski. Thanks so much for being part of this interview. I'm really excited to get the chance to talk to you. I know we talked very briefly last week. But um, for those that may not be familiar with your name, can you tell us a little bit uh, about what you created? So I'm Caitlin and this is my dad Ed. we are the Zikowskis. And so over quarantine, I had no access to my instrument. I played the marimba at school. So it's a big instrument like a giant wooden xylophone and it's kind of expensive so I had no access to it at home and we had no idea what to do because I was like oh I miss playing my instrument so after looking online a little bit I found that there was an article that said how to build a marimba and I was like that's crazy 
But then I started reading it more and I was like, you know what, this might be doable. So I brought it up to my dad and we were like, let's try it. Cause why not? We have all the time in the world. So we just went out on a limb and went for it. And now we have a marimba in my bedroom. Wow. That is, that is impressive. Um, I, I watched the video. It was sent to me last week. I saw it had a little over a thousand views right now so far. And myself being a percussionist by training, although most of my stuff is conducting now, I've always wanted a marimba myself. But of course they are a bit, you know, cost prohibitive. And I think through every percussionist, it goes through our mind of like, well, I'll just make one. And then you realize that's not a very practical thing. But oh my goodness, I was shocked when I got this text that there's this video of this girl out in Pennsylvania that now I believe you're in high school, correct? What, what grade are you going into? I'm going to be a senior next year. Gosh, my goodness. That's like every high school percussionist dream is to have a marimba in their bedroom. I mean, my goodness. And you just took it upon yourself to do this. I have so many questions for you aside from why. But I, if I could just go to dad, Ed, for a moment here. Um, myself as a parent, uh, my son isn't old enough to play formal at marimba yet and ask me for that. Um, but when he does, I'll send him to you guys. So what was your reaction when your daughter came up to you and said, Dad, I got this idea. I know we all have a little extra time on our hands. I want to do this. What, what, what did you think? Uh, you yeah, know, I, I know how to use some tools and stuff from when I was a child. Uh, my dad taught me some things. But, you know, when I'm looking at the project, I'm like, this is probably out of my range. So initially I started looking online. What could I get that was kind of in the price range of what it would cost me to do this? He looked at some uh, three octave marimbas, the electronic, so that was not good, you right. know, cause she's a 4.3. Uh, so she wanted a 4.3. And uh, so that kind of left us in the build area because as you had stated before, yes, it, it is cost prohibitive to get halfway decent stuff. Uh, you know, you look at the different types of woods, um, we didn't get the African wood for the keys, but you know, we, we did the best we could with the, what was available to us at the time. Traditionally for the marimba keys, we use Paduke. Uh, some people use rosewood, but we just used oak wood that we picked up on Lowe's and it worked, so. Wow. So I, I've been doing it wrong for all these years, waiting for the Yamaha Honduran rosewood. <laughs> like, I had to just go, that, that's amazing. That is, now of course, obviously the, the wood, I'm sure in your experience, which I'm so curious about, hear more about it, but that the wood certainly makes a difference in the quality of sound. Um, and I was watching your video that you, you did not add resonators, correct? Because it was just intended for practice, right? Yes. Right. There was a step that we were thinking about adding resonators, and it would have just been a PVC component. Uh, so you go get sewer PVC and just uh, add it along the bottom. But you know, I'm sitting there, well, there's a amount of work in that, and it makes the halfway decent tone. There's no pedals, yeah. but, you know, it's like, if she really wanted to amplify, it would probably be easier and cheaper for me to just mic it. Uh, so Very true. Very nice. Wow. I, I, I am just, I'm still so just shocked by this, and it's so impressive. So, um, so you're going to be a senior in high school. How long have you been playing? Did, didn't your teacher give you a bell kit to solve this problem? Yes, but it was, it's only three octave. Uh, so I guess I've been playing since fourth grade. Uh, right. for about, and I got this bells kit that most of our students get when they start mallet percussion. And it was only three octaves. So I couldn't really play four mallets with it because it's so tiny. Right. And play any of my marching band music i couldn't learn any solos for marimba or anything like that at home all i could do was maybe like play a scale or something and even that doesn't help with muscle memory or anything on the marimba because it doesn't really translate too well to the bigger graduated keys wow well it's yeah holy cow that is that is really cool all right so um how long did this whole process take you to, to do? When did you start it and when did you finish it? Well, we started uh, right like a week and a half after we went into quarantine. So March 24th, maybe something around there. Um, and we just, that day we got some boards from Lowe's, some oak boards, and we tested out some keys to see if this would be possible. 
And once we got our first key tuned, we went forward with it. And we kept going and- oh, I'm sorry, our, I, I apologize for interrupting you, but you said you got your first key tuned. You, 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 you didn't try to, you tuned the keys. Yeah. Uh, how, how is what I'm stuck on? How did you possibly, and I saw there's a video where there's a picture I think also where you have like a, a baseball uh, base mm -hmm. and you are sanding, correct, with the power sander. To, is that how you're tuning them? So there's a little bit of a process that goes around tuning keys. So first you have like a giant oak board that you would get. You need to cut it down to the size of the individual keys. So I had a chart with all of the dimensions that we just found from the internet. And you just cut all of the keys to their size. And then you just have these blocks. So we had to cut arches. So I measured out and drew like a shape for him to cut with the bandsaw. So then once we had that arch cut, it was kind of like a trapezoid triangle shape. Uh, we used a belt sander. So that was the one, it's a more powerful sander than the palm sander. So it goes a lot quicker. So we use that just for the initial rough tuning. So you would sand the arch and the more wood that you take off, um, the more the pitch lowers. So it's very crucial that you do not remove too much wood too early. We learned that the hard way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so then once you get it rough tuned, about like 50 cents above, then I go out with the palm sander and try to sand it more precisely, like slower to get to that perfect, like in tune pitch. You, usually when someone your age says 50 cents above, it means something very different. But yes, <laughs> your tuning actually, well, I, I'm so impressed. Um, I, I am so shocked. So I have to share that I, I did share this with a few friends of mine and everyone just had the same, the same reaction of, wow, how? And we all kind of figure out the why because we all wanted one. We all wanted to do this, but we're all so shocked. So um, uh, at the end of this, go ahead and please send me your address because I have a few friends that will want to send you a few things just because we're all just amazingly shocked with this. And it's so cool. And what's so wonderful about this, and maybe you might not realize it right away, but there are so many opportunities to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to stop. And yet you chose not to. And you chose that you're going to have the fortitude, continue with this, and make it right, and learn about the details of sanding and tuning. And I am just totally over the moon about that, especially myself being a percussionist. I can really appreciate and not even comprehend the amount of detail and work that went into it. So um, I made a call over to a good friend of mine named Michael Balter, who runs Mike Balter Mallets. He wants to send you some stuff. Uh, then I give a call over to Ron Samuels this morning over in Northern California who makes Marimba One uh, Marimbas. We're all just shocked about this. And Ron wants to send you some mallets uh, from his company. And I spoke earlier from my friends at Zildjian and Vic Firth. We want to send you some mallets from them too. Uh, and I also got a call this morning from Joshua Simmons of the Progressive Arts Society. And so Mr. Simmons would like to give you a membership to Progressive Arts Society for one year, as well as give you a pass for this year's Percussive Art Society International Virtual Convention. So <laughs> we are totally big fans of you and your dad, Ed, for doing this. As the percussion world, you know what? Game on. You just raised the bar higher and higher. Uh, thank you so much for, for sharing this and to my friends who shared this with me. I hope you get a lot more than a 1,000 views, and I hope that a lot more people continue to – you know, make lemonade when they're handed lemons. So Gosh, I do have to say, I mean, you know, everything. Thank you very much for all that. It's very, nice. very nice. Yes. Uh, I was looking uh, up the oh. other day, like PASIC, and I was like, oh, that would be so cool one day to go to PASIC. Yeah. <laughs> and just like here, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Um, he was I, the I, driving I, force in this whole thing because. I didn't look up anything. I'm not the dad who's making the Pinewood Derby thing for their kid. Yeah. She did the work. I did the stuff where she was going to come away with all her fingers. You know, I'm using the bandsaw. I'm using, right. you know, the belt sander. Um, she then took it upon herself to do the fine tuning with, uh, so I, I did let her use some of the tools yeah, under I supervision. Tried yeah. But <laughs> she looked up everything. She did all the work. It's just, 
And, you know, it, it, there were some pauses where we had to figure things out. But for the most part, it was just, it was really all her. And I was just, I was happy I could do something really special with my daughter over the time. Because it, it was really it was cool. really nice to have the project to do together. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. That, that, yeah, that's definitely a project. But that's, that's really awesome. And I got to tell you, you know, it's um, being a professional musician or, you know, just being a person, hearing a story like this, I'm sure your intention wasn't to, to get accolades or whatever or, or free amounts. But, but I think for us, it was definitely a silver lining in what can oftentimes be right now kind of a negative environment. And that positive story uh, goes a really long way. And whether you realize it or not, it kind of sets the bar and, and it kind of refocuses things of, you know, it's all about a matter of how you set your mind to something, a matter of perspective. And so um, and that's where, aside, again, aside from being a percussionist and appreciating the difficulty of that, or not comprehending the difficulty of that, but in sharing with some friends, uh, you know, we just wanted to say congratulations and write on because it's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, again, just have uh, the ability and uh, I don't know that I had the ability, but I learned a lot <laughs> along the way. But it's nice to be able to create something, especially in the environment, as you said, as it is right mm -hmm. now. It's just uh, it's a strange world at the moment. So to create instead of break stuff down is, is a good thing. It's a positive Momentum. Yeah. If, something if I may interject really quickly, can we, can she, you we hear her play it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that possible? Oh, it doesn't actually work, Joel. Sorry, it's just <laughs> visual only. They can't play it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Nice job. Yeah. Good technique too. Band. I'm a bit out of practice. <laughs> but now uh, I'm <laughs> that's great. Don't forget, send me your address so we can send you this stuff. Appreciate it a lot. Yes, thank, thank you very you much. So much. I mean, this is just this wonderful. I'm I'm happy that you know it's it's nice for her. It's it's really nice of you to reach out, uh, and I, I appreciate thank it. I know she you. appreciates it immensely. Thank you very much. Well, we were all shocked. And uh, I, so was, <laughs> I was shocked. I said, hey, it works. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I remember, you know, about, gosh, over 20 years ago when I was kind of in your shoes um, thinking like, you know, I, there must be a way I can do this and finding some probably infantile document how to create. And I was like, no, nah, no way. Uh-uh. I'm out. <laughs> I was like, step one, like, forget it. Mm -mm, this is not going to happen. I can't vision this. I'm pretty creative. And I was like, uh-uh, can't. So really, my hat is off to you. That's super cool. And I'm so glad that people like like Michael Balter and Ron Samuels at Marimba One and the people at Zildjian and Vic Firth and at PAS that all of them, you know, wanted to share in this because we're all, we're all super proud of you. From the percussion community, we adore you. Great job, and uh, keep raising the bar high. Thank, All right. you. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. My thanks to Caitlin and Father Ed for sharing this story. And a very big special thanks to Michael Balter of Mike Balter Mallets, Ron Samuels of Marimba One, Joshua Simmons of the Percussive Art Society, and Vic Firth and Zildjian for their support of Caitlin. 
Let's continue on the percussion family with a composition by Bill Smith performed by international marimbist Shi Yi Wu. My name is Bill Smith and my piece is entitled Reconciling Reality. I wrote it to process the barrage of disheartening news and refocus my thoughts on navigating 2020 from a foundation of faith, hope, and love. Please enjoy Reconciling Reality, performed by my dear friend Shi Yi Wu, international soloist and head of percussion at Northwestern University. My name is Jared Elias, and I wrote the multi-percussion solo MMXX. This year has been filled with sadness, uncertainty, and frustration, but at the same time, many moments of positive change, hope, and happiness. This piece was written to express any and all of those feelings, providing any artist the opportunity of a complete freedom of expression. I hope you enjoy MMXX, premiered by Rainer Carroll of the Los Angeles Philharmonic.
Hi, my name is Aaron Desi and my piece of music is called Psychedelic Reflections. It was inspired by a walk I took on the beach earlier this year in Santa Monica. The sun had gone down and the lights of the Santa Monica Pier were reflecting in the water. But it was eerily quiet because of the lockdown. The piece of music is played on the marimba by Michael Culligan of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. We continue our transition to the next section with the, not quite percussion, not quite strings, but with piano, harp, and guitar. With performances by international soloist Shinny Wong, by Helen Webby of the Christchurch Symphony in New Zealand, by Elisa Torres of the Puerto Rico Symphony, as well as international star Lawrence Juber on guitar. Enjoy. My name is Sapna Shah. And the title of my solo piano work, What's a Man's Life Worth, refers to the Black Lives Matter demonstrations in response to George Floyd's death, and specifically to his brother's words when he testified before the House Judiciary Committee. His exact words were, is that what a black man's life is worth, $20? Vacillating between anger, peace, empathy, and hope, it is a musical narrative of the events which occurred and unfolded this year. Performing my piece is world-famous pianist, Xin Yi Huang.
Hi everyone, I'm Mark Smythe, originally from New Zealand, coming to you from Shadow Hills, California, complete with shadowy mood lighting. You're about to hear my new piece, Moto Revivo, performed by Helen Webby, principal harpist for the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra back in New Zealand. My second collaboration with Helen, I wrote a piece for her some years ago called Moto Mojo. Uh, now, Moto is of course Italian for movement, and Mojo is your life force. And this is a companion piece, Moto Revivo. Revivo is an old Latin word for revival, something we're all trying to do in some way with this project. I really hope you enjoy this piece. Hello, I'm Conrad Pope, and for the Los Angeles Film Conducting Intensives concert this evening, I've written a piece for harp. Actually, I've written it for Alicia Torres, the magnificent harpist, virtuoso harpist of the Puerto Rican Symphony. The 
piece is entitled Dulcinea's Dreams and Alicia performs it magnificently. I hope that you enjoy her performance this evening.
Hello, I'm Mason Lamb. 2020 has taken so much from us. Everything's in a state of upheaval, and it's so easy to despair. But you know, I think the most radical reaction we can have is to choose to hope. It's not easy. And this piece is a musical meditation on that struggle. Please enjoy Between Hope and Despair, performed here by the incomparable and internationally celebrated guitarist, Lawrence Juber. We continue on to the string family with a composition by composer Martina Eisenreich performed by violinist Nathan Cole of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. My name is Martina Eisenreich, I'm from Germany and my piece is entitled just 2020. This violin solo piece is a tale of this exceptional current year. A year of sudden changes, deep fears, absolute silence, and new beginnings. So there are three movements. First, what is happening. Second, daydream. And third, where do we go from here? Please enjoy 2020, performed by Nathan Cole, first concert master of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra.
Hi, my name is Nathalie Bonin, and my piece is entitled Turmoil for Solo Violin. The piece is largely inspired by the events of 2020. The pandemic, George Floyd, the protests, the confusion reigning socially and politically while feeling the urge to find peace as an individual going through phases of emotions. I have chosen to perform this piece myself, and I hope you enjoy. My name is Philip Robert Ollila and my piece is entitled Aftermath for Solo Viola. It's a meditation on the events of this year, some still ongoing, but also on rebuilding and eventually looking past these challenging times. Please enjoy Aftermath by Chaba Erdalji of the Indianapolis Chamber Orchestra. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Alastair Robertson, I'm a composer from the UK and my piece is called Elegy. My hope with this piece was to pay tribute to those who suffered due to racial prejudice and discrimination and more broadly it's about the deep-rooted instability and social tensions felt all over the world at this time. So I hope you enjoy this premier performance by the principal cellist of the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra the wonderful Andrew Shulman. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Knowing my brother is to love my brother. He was a gentle giant. He didn't hurt anybody. Those are the words of Philonese Floyd, following his brother George Floyd's senseless murder at the hands of Minneapolis police officers on May 25th, 2020. I'm Jules Pegram, speaking to you today from my home here in northern Los Angeles, and I'm so grateful to bassist Renan Meyer of Time for Three for his beautiful realization of my new composition, Gentle Giant, a work I've penned in celebration of the spirit of George Floyd, just one of countless lives stolen on this country's endless journey towards justice.
As we come to the end of our virtual concert, we're going to take a look into the ensemble side of the 2020 New Music Project. So here are just a few examples, but go to lefci.org where you'll find many more. Up next, the performance by Helix Collective by composer Reuven Herman. Hi, my name is Reuven Herman, and I am a composer for film, television, and games. In an era where I can't breathe has become a rallying cry, as we all wear masks to prevent the spread of the terrible airborne coronavirus, and as we are inundated with a tsunami of bad news and disinformation, it was inevitable that the title of my woodwind quintet would be De-Asphyxiation, to be performed by Los Angeles-based new music group, Helix Collective. Hi, my name is Jeff Russo. Uh, the piece I've written is called A Quarantine Conversation, and it is meant as exactly that, a conversation between two parents uh, discussing the ups and downs and ins and outs of what they have been experiencing during the quarantine. Um, it starts before, um, goes to in the middle, and then has a hopeful uh, ending. Um, enjoy a quarantine conversation as performed by Nathan Cole and Akiko Tarmoto of the LA Phil on violin, um, Robert Thies on piano, and Sarah Andon on flute. Enjoy.
Hello, my name is Booker White, and I want to thank Angel and the Film Conducting Intensive for the opportunity to express some of my thoughts through music about America's current social landscape from a personal viewpoint. And I want to especially thank these great musicians, Nathan Cole on violin, Andrew Schulman on cello, Jeff Nelson on French horn, Alex Isles on trombone, Robert Thies on piano, Elisa Torres on harp, and Arturo Sandoval on trumpet. I want to thank you all for taking the time to give my music life. Thank you. Well, we've come to the end of our concert. Thank you for joining us today as we've kicked off the 2020 New Music Project with this virtual concert. And remember, there's a lot more out there. Go to lefci.org and check it out. From carillon to more string trio to solo instruments to an antiphonal brass quintet 
that's written for a parking structure. There's so much out there to embrace this coming concert season and an effort to find a way to connect to you with music. My thanks to all of the composers who participated in this virtual concert and to all of those that still are online at LAFSA.org and to all the performers for so beautifully giving life to these compositions. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you for joining us. I look forward to getting the chance to make music together again soon. But until then, be well and stay safe. I'm Emily Bernstein, and I'm leading the movement portions in the mornings of LAFCI. It's nice to start the morning with some movement related to conducting, but really moving the whole body and thinking about strengthening the body in order to be prepared to get up on the podium. I didn't even really do it so I could conduct. I did it so I could understand conducting. Um, in, in recording music that I, that I would write. And then after it, I just sort of loved it so much, I wanted to continue to do it and do it. And, uh, and I would never have been able to feel that sort of confidence without Bill and, and Conrad and, and Angel. It's my great honor and pleasure to come and help young musicians and young composers acquire some of the skills that one needs in order to make music in the studios in Hollywood. And that's what and that's what I do here, is help Angel Velez instruct these young pupils. A group of people that don't know each other come together with a common love for music and a common interest in film music, even though they all write different kinds of film music. They bond together and it's one of these magical things of where people are friends and colleagues. And all I can say is that it's one of the favorite things that I do each year. Today's events present a lot of challenges, whether it's striping, recording off-site, Revisiting ensemble sizes we get to work with, or even hybrid models. My colleagues and I feel confident in moving forward and taking these problems head on and still creating the highest possible way of music making all via the lens of conducting. I encourage you to join me and my colleagues, Emily Bernstein, Conrad Pope, William Ross, and Booker White, as we address these issues and many more moving forward in today's current times with the intensive 2021 this coming January here in Los Angeles. For more information and to apply, please visit lasci.org.